Okay, so for today's uh, topic, we're going to talk about Tumblr. So again, I'll write some notes and I'll put them into the network folder at the end of the day. And so we, last week's we've talked about WordPress, which I like to liken to the long form blog platform. This is where you're going to write 100 words, 500 words, 1,000 words, where you're going to um, really uh, put out a lot of content. And we, and we saw previously text, pictures, um, just long form content. In contrast, today we're going to talk about Tumblr. Notice how it's spelled without the E. And this is the opposite. I would call it short form blog platform. Uh, Tumblr is cool. It's interesting because it's, it, it like walks the line between a blog and a social network. Uh, it lets you write 500 words if you want. But when we set it up, we'll see that it's a little more focused on short form, or you could also say short attention spans putting out quick information, pictures, animations, video, text, just quick snippets. Um, and oftentimes with a link, a link to go read the long thing or to go buy the product or, or whatever. So you can actually use WordPress as your main platform. And uh, we saw that at WordPress.com under one of the settings, we have the publicize feature. And under Publicize, what we can do is once we publish a post, we then send that post elsewhere, like to Tumblr. So WordPress can send our long post over to Tumblr for us. We're going to use this as if we only had Tumblr, just to see what its nuances are like. And last week I asked everyone, sort of for homework, to create a Tumblr account. Because when I've noticed, when I try to teach this, uh, and we have a whole room of people trying to create a Tumblr at the same time, sometimes it kind of crashes. It doesn't let everyone create an account. Tumblr thinks, why are there 10, 15, 20 people at once creating a Tumblr account? And some people are able to create it, some people are not. So hopefully you, you did create the account before today because I'm going to get started as if you have created one. If you didn't create one, you'll need to follow the process on your own and it's not too complicated, but uh, again, I asked last week, try to set that up. So what we'll do is go ahead and open your web browser. We'll go to tumblr.com, T-U-M-B-L-R, tumblr.com. We saw this briefly at the end of the day yesterday. I'll mention it again briefly. We can either get started or log in. So if you didn't create the account, what you want to do is you take a moment while I finish talking here, go into the get started and create an account. If you did create an account, we'll do log in in just a moment. But if you didn't get a chance to create it, go ahead and do so as I finish talking here. Because Tumblr then tells you what Tumblr is about, it's the place to share content. It's the place to share stories and photos and videos and, and sounds and everything. It's nearly 300 million blogs, so lots and lots of users of Tumblr. Very popular. Uh, a couple of years back, they were, they were bought by Yahoo. So big internet company Yahoo bought, bought Tumblr. Tumblr's blogs. Uh, so you're able to share photos, animations. Notice here it's a big focus on, on the preview on pictures. So you'll have to sort of think about it in those terms. I've got this article that I wrote. But what's the picture attached to it? What's the picture that sells it, that gets attention? So we'll see all of these nuances, of course. Uh, but uh, you're not going to write the full 500 words in this. You will see that these, the way it all looks is different than uh, the long-form blog like WordPress.
we'll see that it has this aspect of the social network because there are going to be these stats, statistics, that we'll get into, that will possibly allow us to um, reach more people. This goes on to say that Tumblr can let you write text, posts, photo posts, quotes, links, chats, audio, video posts, and you can mix and match. You can put one plus another kind of post. But let's say I, I wrote a 500 word article on my WordPress. I want to get more views. Maybe I'm building an audience on Tumblr because we can sort of to some degree use it as a social network, as a marketing platform. So I go to Tumblr, I take one of the pictures of my article, I share it here, but I also put the link back to the article, the 500 word article. People see it here and they might just see the picture and that's enough and then they click like and they move on. Again, short attention spans. Or they might see <coughs> the preview of the article, they're interested, so then they click and they go to uh, my WordPress blog and read the whole thing. Or they go back there and buy the product, whatever I'm doing on my site. And again, it goes on to say you have different post types. What you share is up to you, and this is what I always say, especially in my social media class. I teach a social media class. I teach people how to the basics of how to use Twitter, um, Facebook, etc. And uh, I always have to say, well, I can teach you the tools of these networks, but what you put there is really up to you. I can't exactly teach that. That requires a marketing strategy and a company profile. And we talk about that in my SEO class. That is, what should I be doing online? So again, we had a day where we brainstormed, what should you write? And uh, that's that's, that's going to be up to you. What are you going to be sharing? What are you going to be writing and, and creating on these networks online? I can't exactly teach that. And you'll find plenty of articles out there that, you, that will give you an answer. You should do this every Monday, and you should do this every Friday, and don't forget to do this and that. And that works great for some people, and it doesn't for other people. So all those articles are correct, and all of those articles are incorrect. It just depends on you and your brand and your company and your product and everything. So it doesn't hurt to try. Uh, but I don't exactly teach you and tell you, remember to do this, and don't forget to, to write about that, and share this kind of picture with 300 pixels. I don't do that because it uh, doesn't apply to everyone. And then it says, okay, we'll, we'll get started. So, again, you should have already created the profile. I'm going to click Login. Uh, when I mentioned it last week, I said create the profile. You don't have to do very much with it. Just go through the process of creating the profile and uh, verifying the email, perhaps. But uh, I already have an account that I just created recently. So when, so when you created the Tumblr account, it asks you to uh, choose some topics, some ideas. I think I chose probably art and history. I chose some topics. The point of that is that Tumblr will then show you content that you might be interested in regarding that, those topics. And when I talk, if you take the social media class, in there I talk about you create a Twitter account for your business, but you're still and you're trying to and you're trying to build followers, but you're still going to follow other accounts. Your business account is going to follow other businesses or people on Twitter, or Instagram, or LinkedIn, or YouTube, any of these networks, including to various degrees Tumblr. Your business is going to connect with other businesses on Tumblr or other networks. So I'll say here, on every platform, so Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, etc., have your company 
connect with others. Use the dialog of social media, not the monologue. In the social media class, I, I say this concept over and over. I'll say it to us here. I don't believe I've talked about it at all in this class. But social media can be run as a dialogue or a monologue. So uh, tell me, what's a monologue? What's the definition of a monologue, or how have you heard it? Monologue. Single, single voice, one, one person talking at you, or just uh, you know, one direction. Monologue, mono. Dialogue is back and forth or multiple voices. So I recommend to use social media, I recommend to use Tumblr, WordPress, etc. as a dialogue that you are creating content, yes, but you're also inviting response, you're inviting subscribers, you're trying to get likes, you're trying to build activity. So that's what we'll be talking about a little bit more in detail with Tumblr rather than WordPress because it really is a mixture. It's like a new generation of blog in that it's half blog, half social network. And so I'm saying that because I, I'm getting all of these pop-ups to get me oriented into Tumblr because I have a brand new account. If you see any of these pop-ups, just click whatever, just close that thing. Uh, but what I'm getting at is that when I created the account, it said follow this, follow this, follow that. And that's what I'm saying about um, connect with other accounts, other users. I'll say uh, because they are your potential audience, customers, readers, whatever. Uh, I have, like I was saying previously, I have Victor's Bakery, and I'm uh, trying to sell cupcakes, but I'm going to write articles. Recipe of the month, employee of the quarter, top 10 um, uh, alternatives to sugar, etc. I'm going to be uh, creating that content because I want people to find that via search and then to buy my product. So with Tumblr, with Twitter, with YouTube, etc., same thing. I'm trying to reach people on YouTube, on Tumblr, on Twitter that care about that. Baked goods, healthy alternatives, etc. So I'm going to create that content on all the networks. And when I follow an account, I can see the inspiration of what... Um, I can see the inspiration about what people are, are sharing, and um, I can get those ideas as well. I can use those ideas. So because they're your potential audience and are useful for inspiration. Because I'm going to get writer's block. What am I going to write again? What am I going to post? What kind of picture should I share? If you're following accounts, you'll see what they're doing, and then you can have the idea of what you can do. So before we get too far into using, uh, using Tumblr, I want to go over a few settings that might be valuable for Tumblr. So at the top right corner, go ahead and click on uh, your account icon. It's got this little person. And then click Settings. The confusing thing about Tumblr is that you can, you can create an account, and then you can create multiple blogs, multiple Tum blogs, Tumblr blogs. So you created an account, you got one you got one account uh, attached to your one email. But what you can do is you can um, have one email to create multiple Tumblr blogs. Uh, I just created something at random, but on the bottom right over here it says create a new blog. I won't do that at the moment, but I'm, I'm just telling you. 
you can create multiple blogs to point of for different topics, different things that you're that you're sharing. So the confusing thing is, am I editing or am I working with one blog or a different blog that I created? Am I looking at the settings of my main account or one of the sub blogs that I created? So you just have to pay attention to what you're looking at. But here, when I went to the settings, these are the settings of my whole account in general. There's your email, password. Something interesting that I've never used, but sounds interesting, dial a post. If you set up your phone number, you can actually call a specific phone number and leave yourself like a voicemail to be added to your Tumblr. It's just a different way to share. I can share text, pictures, audio, so if I set this up, what I could do conceivably is call my specific number and leave a sound file of myself. You know, maybe I could do like little tiny uh, podcasts this way. Call this, call up, speak a little bit for a couple of minutes, and that's something that I'm sharing, sharing my thoughts. Again, personally, I haven't done it. It's one of the things on my to-do list, but it seems interesting. There's the language of the blog, active sessions, where you've connected from. The settings here have account settings, dashboard settings, notifications. We'll look at all of them briefly. So after account, we'll look at dashboard settings. Interface. All of these defaults are fine. Show notifications. So when someone comments on your posts, tell me about it. When someone replies, tell me about it. So notifications, like a social network. And those will appear over here under the little lightning bolt. This is activity that's happening on my blog. So if I don't want to see any of that, I can turn that off. Do I want to see everything as it happens? Yes or no? Endless scrolling. This is one of the characteristics of Tumblr in that when you look at stuff on Tumblr, basically you look at something and you scroll and you see something else and you scroll and you see more stuff and it just keeps going on and on. You don't see something that says um, next page, previous page. That's the classic way but Tumblr, because it's one of the more modern blog platforms, has this concept of endless scroll. There's never a next page, previous page. Again, that really ties into its character as a short form blog. Like, what else is there? What's next? If you don't want that, you can turn that off, turn that off there. Endless scrolling. This is for your own home screen. When you're looking at your home screen and the and your latest the content of who you're connected with, that's what you're changing. For your own blog to be endless or not, we will see that a little bit later. Rich text editor. We have a couple of options here. We will be able to uh, use the rich text editor, which is the, uh, you can make things bold, italics, change colors, make it large, put you know, design it like a like an editor. You can. It's not just going to be plain old text. You can make some design. So the built-in rich text editor is a nice way to quickly make something interesting looking. You can choose plain plain text or HTML. If you know some HTML, you can write HTML this way. So if you know about the H1 tag, or if you want to add style, uh, CSS style, background colors and such, you, you can select that. And then Markdown is like a special language based sort of like on keywords. You're marking this will be bold, you're marking this will be italics, italicized. Usually the default is just fine, but if you have experience in HTML, it might be useful to use the HTML option for more design choices. If you have sound on your computer, you're going to hear various sounds as things happen via messaging. And if you change any of these, it will automatically save. Huh. 
I'm going to look at the notifications options. This one seems very, very basic, but this is actually a complex one. It says, email me about trending topics, interesting blogs, or whatever. So this is up to you. I personally turn this off as soon as I can. I don't really want to get emailed by whatever. I don't want to get emailed about trending topics and all of that. But as a beginner, as you're starting to use Tumblr and seeing how does it work and all of that, this might be useful for you to get these emails to give you inspiration to show you how Tumblr works and, and all of that. And later, later on you can turn it off. What's very decept deceptive about this screen is you're actually also going to get potentially a lot of emails from Tumblr. And they're all hidden right here. All notifications and emails. Basically send me all notifications and emails. If you click the pencil, look at this. Send me an email when I get a new follower, when I get a reply, a mention, when someone answers my question, when I get fan mail. And send me those emails from everyone. So, it's up to you to decide what's good here, or if you simply want to change it to from nobody. So don't send me emails from people you follow. If you've got a lot of connections, a lot of followers, you might be getting a lot of email. That sounds like a good problem to have. But if you don't want to get all of these emails, what you could do is set it to the second option. And what that will be is that if someone follows you, and you follow them back, then you will get these emails from this activity. Again, as a beginner, to see how it all works, I'm simply going to leave it as, as the default, and if I decide that I'm getting too many emails and such, I can come back to the settings and change it. Under the app screen, you probably don't have anything here, but it's going to tell you. You can get the iPhone app, you can get the Android app, the Windows app. You can take Tumblr with you on the go. Again, another reason why it's the short attention span platform or the short form blog platform. You can have it in your pocket when you have a free time, uh, you know, during the commute or on the bus or at home or a quiet moment, you can pull up the Tumblr app and start to write something. Uh, take a photo quickly. And, share all of this stuff. And labs, this is something I'm not going to get into at all, but labs is like experimental features of Tumblr. So I won't really mention that. All of these settings are about your account in general. You created a, a Tumblr blog. I made one up right here. So whatever name yours is right here, it says blog. You can have more than one. Whatever your blog that, that you created, click on it there. You may have a different icon than me. Just click on your actual blog, and that build and that takes you over to the settings of of your blog. The other settings we were looking at were the settings of the whole account. And again, this is the confusing part. You can use one email address to create multiple blogs on Tumblr. Technically, you can also do that on WordPress.com. So from this screen, we'll, we'll have various little things to look at. There's an icon. My blog is currently untitled. We'll see how to edit that in a moment. Username. So I made up some username. And whenever you create a username on Tumblr, it gives you a, a blog called whatever.tumblr.com. Just like WordPress. I have victorsbakery.wordpress.com. I can have victorsbakery.tumblr.com. And you can change that here. This needs to be no spaces. You can put capital letters if you'd like. And right there, I, I changed. I changed my Tumblr address. So now I'm Victor's Bakery. Tumblr .com. We'll look at theme in a moment. We've got encryption. This is a big topic for our modern age. We've had various aspects of the internet for decades. We've had the World Wide Web. We've had websites for 25 years. You may have 
one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years of experience with computers. Uh, but security is a big thing that's coming up more and more and more online. You're hearing all the time about, oh, Target got hacked. Oh, the IRS got hacked. Oh, this college got hacked. Oh, that hospital got hacked. You're hearing all of these things. So security is very important. And there's this concept of SSL, which is security, basically. Uh, do you ever notice you, you oftentimes see a lock on, on certain websites, especially websites with, with sensitive information like banks and such? That's security. So this is saying, would you like to activate security on your blog? You think, well, I don't need that. I am just writing about cats. Well, this is, of course, up to you to turn it on or off. But in theory, turning something like this on helps you and everyone else because it creates a secure connection between the person and your blog. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, take advantage of public Wi-Fi like at Starbucks or at restaurants and such. The problem with that, with someone giving free Wi-Fi, is there could be someone that is snooping in on the connection. You go to Starbucks and there's always a person in the corner with a laptop uh, that never moves, never buys anything. Paranoid, the paranoid me thinks that person is there spying on the traffic that is flying through the air that Starbucks is giving away for free. Not that Starbucks is the bad guy here, it's the person that, that knows that Inherently, that's often not secure. So the more you use security features like this, the better. This is obviously not the, the um, be-all, end-all answer. You know, if your password is still password123, that could be a problem as well. Uh, but as you activate security features, it does help you and everyone. Tumblr, as I said, is like a mixture of a social network and a blog platform because you can like people's posts, you can follow people's blogs. And so every time your business account, every time your blog likes something from another blog, by default, that's public. So if you don't want that to be public, you can easily turn it off. So the reason you would be liking, you might think, well, okay, I'll never like anything. I, I, I don't want this to show up. I don't want people to see that. The reason why you would like content, other people's content, is because then that's how you make them aware of your existence. You've written yet, you've created yet another amazing Tumblr blog. You and a hundred other people in the last hour. So how do you get visitors and views to your blog? You become active like a social network. You give likes, you reply, etc., which we'll talk about. That's why you would want to like and comment and such. But be aware that by default, when you like other people's stuff, people could see that. So be careful what you're liking. You can also follow other people's blogs on Tumblr your business can follow another business on Tumblr. And the reason for that, of course, is many, which we'll look at, but could be for inspiration and uh, to see the competition and all of that stuff. And if you do like other people's blogs or follow other people's blogs, that'll be public. If you don't want that to be public, you can turn that off. Don't show the blogs that my blog is following. Don't show the likes that my blog is liking. So then we've got here replies, comments. Over on, on WordPress, we have some pretty good ways to filter out negative comments, spam comments, and such. Tumblr's a little bit more open. Uh, and we have three options. They've changed this recently. They made it a little better, I think. But we have three options. Anyone can reply. Anyone can comment on your posts. Or Tumblr's people who follow and Tumblr's following you for a week can reply. Meaning, um, someone follows you and they've been following you for more than a week, then they can reply. 
that in theory is supposed to help cut down the spammers. Uh, spammers can create an account very quickly, start to comment, add their spam links. But if they're so new that they haven't followed you yet, that they've barely followed you for one day, and try to comment, they will not be able to. Or you can say only tumblers you follow can't reply. Meaning, someone follows you and then you follow them, that's when they can reply on your posts. So that's much more strict. You can decide what you like here, but I think the default is fine. Here's two item, here's three items about the dialogue of social media, the dialogue of modern blogging. We've got this feature of ask, which is turned off. So what this is saying is, let people ask you a question on Tumblr. The point of that is user interaction. The point of that is community building. The point of that is the dialogue. So if you turn that on, you will get added to the address of your Tumblr. Mine is victorsbakery.tumblr.com. At the end, it will add slash ask. It will create a special address attached to your address, where if anyone goes to that link, they can ask you something. You can change what that says. You can allow, right now it's set up, only people that have a Tumblr account can ask me a question on Tumblr. But if you activate anyone, not even anonymous people, can ask me a question, anyone can ask you. So we'll give this a shot right now. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, what's your favorite uh, baked good? So let me, let me ask you to do this. Um, try this for fun. Go to this address. Go to... HTTP colon slash slash Victor's Bakery with two Y's dot Tumblr dot com slash ask. Go to that address to see that I've activated the feature to ask to try this out and answer the question just to show you what that looks like because this is an, a feature that WordPress doesn't exactly have. This is a feature that lets people ask a question and you saw how I crafted the question to say what's your favorite baked good so you go here there's a place to write an answer to verify that you're not a robot you can ask anonymously that's fine or log in if you're logged in and then click ask and then I'll show those in a little bit but this is one of the ways to to create this uh, this is dialogue of social media. This is a way to get ideas of what to write. Maybe you've written a bunch of posts and then you're starting to run out of ideas of what to write. And so you ask your community. Obviously, that means that you've built a community. But you ask your community, what's, what next article should I write about? What are, you interested in, what are you interested in knowing about? You know, some form of a question and get people to answer. So maybe just to see what it looks like, answer that. The other items that are within this within this section of dialogue is submissions. Let people submit posts. Uh, so if I activate this one, again, what I can craft this. What am I going to ask? Submit. Or I can say submit your favorite recipe. 
I can write some guidelines and optional tags. So uh, submission guidelines, I'm going to say, um, just to see what it looks like, I'll say uh, include ingredients. And numbered list of steps. Tags I'll talk about later. And here I'm saying I'm letting people submit a text or a link or a photo or a video or a quote. And what this does it it asks that I mean it adds then the submit address to your main address. So just like a moment ago, you went over to Victor's Bakery with two Ys, .tumblr.com, ask, now you can go to that address, slash submit. You don't have to do this one, it's more to ask, but uh, notice here, then here's a spot for um, people to submit. All of this you will see and you will be able to approve and such until and keep it hidden until you approve it to show up, if you ever want it to show up. So that's one of the cool things. It's not just that any crazy person is suddenly going to add their crazy thoughts to your blog. It's that they're going to send them to you, you're going to see them, I'll show you where, and then you can decide to further show them on the site or not. But these are features that are not, uh, that are not built in over on, on WordPress that might be interesting to use, on Tumblr because it's got a different sort of character. So we have the ask feature and we have the submit feature. The third item is messaging. Um, the default actually is very open the default is that anyone can send you a message on Tumblr, which may be good or bad, uh, but if you'd like to control that a little bit more and you turn that on, now you will only get these from, from those that are also following you. And that you're following each other. We'll see when we actually share content, when we post content to Tumblr, that we can uh, share it in about three different ways. One of the ways is sort of like an auto-share. Uh, again, this is very different than WordPress uh, in that I think of something to write, I write it, and I publish it at that moment. Or I think about something to write and I schedule it, and it comes out later. WordPress has that as well, but it has this thing called the queue which is basically, I can put, let's say, four things I'm going to share eventually. I'm going to save those four things to Tumblr, and Tumblr will automatically share those based on these, this criteria here. So if I put four things into my queue, Tumblr will randomly, between 12 midnight and 12 midnight, two times a day, share those things. So if I put 10 things I'm going to share on Tumblr, I'm going to have those, you know, get used up in about five days. I think this is, this is way too, this is going to use up your content way too fast. So what I would do, uh, just to see how this works, you have, well, look at this, it goes all the way up to 50 times a day. So if I put all of these things to my Tumblr, this will automatically put 50 things every day for me. I'm going to recommend most of us once a day. And here it can be it can post it at any time between midnight and midnight. But let's say I want to focus it between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. So if I've added things to my queue, and we'll see how we how we'll do that a little later. If I've added things to my queue, 10 things. Tumblr will automatically share it for me. It'll share the first thing today between 1 and 3. Then tomorrow it'll share one thing randomly between 1 and 3, and then the next day, the next day, the next day. So this requires that you've got stuff in the queue. 
things that you've added to you know the the hopper we'll see how you do that a little later of course but this is something very unique and different and it's not something that that WordPress has for example and this may be something you want you don't have to use it at all of course but I'm making you aware of it because it's something that Tumblr has that WordPress doesn't and this is convenient I'm gonna use Tumblr and then whatever I post on Tumblr I also want it to get sent off to Facebook and Twitter so if you set that up whatever you post here will also go out further because you might have already built an audience of a few people a few dozen people some amount of people on Facebook and or Twitter and therefore those people might be interested in seeing what you've posted to Tumblr you're going to get a unique email address and what you can do there is send an email and attach a photo or write some text or attach an email and that will automatically then get posted to your to your Tumblr so maybe I don't have Tumblr active often but I've always got my email and I have an idea so I send an email to my address my unique address and then it gets posted for me you can check the language of your blog and time zone this is not the right time zone you might want to check that change that allow logged out users to see this blog if you turn that off a person has to have a tumblr account and they have to be logged in to see your tumblr I would leave that on so that anyone can see it and if they then want to comment or connect with you then they can log in I would also recommend to leave on the second option let your tumblr be found when people search if you turn that off uh, people might not find you and therefore you don't get views if your blog is adult oriented you can activate that you should read in there what the default about that is or the details of that because tumblr mixes in aspects of uh, blogging and a social network sometimes there are annoying people or harassing people so you can block accounts on tumblr and they'll all be listed here and if you'd like to unblock for whatever reason you you'll have them listed there and you can unblock them and if you decide well I actually don't want tumblr after all it's not for me you can click delete any questions on any of these settings I've mentioned so far we have two more things to look at in detail one is edit theme we'll look at that one in a moment and we have edit appearance Let's first look at Edit Appearance. So back up all the way to the top and select Edit Appearance. So if we select Edit Appearance, this gives you a spot to edit this background graphic, the header image. It gives you a way also to edit your avatar. So I don't have a, I don't have a picture. But if I had a picture for the header, I could I could add my own picture. And you would want to, as soon as you can, to include your own picture so that you are branding your presence on, on Tumblr. Over here on the avatar, it let you have a square or round shape here. You notice that both are uh, proportional, meaning that it's a square or a circle. If your logo is a rectangle, it's going to look odd here. I believe it crops it. So if you've got a wide logo, you might want to have a proportional logo to fit in here. 
If you don't want any logo there, you can turn it off. I have victorsbakery.tumblr.com, but technically there's no name on the blog on the home page of the blog. Mine's still untitled. So in there I could write Victor's Bakery. In here I can write capital letters, apostrophes and spaces, smiley faces and all of that. Choose colors for the text here. Fonts. Maybe I don't want to show the title. There's a spot for a description. You may not notice it, but right below your title, there's a spot for a description. You can show it or not. And let's see, is there a limit to this? No, you can have a huge description here if you if you think you need one. But what I would do on this description area is uh, thinking in terms like a social network and like a blog. A description of what this blog is about. So I'm going to say family owned bakery in East Lake, California. We specialize in uh, healthy alternatives. So I'm writing something like this because in Tumblr everyone has the ability to search and therefore when I search here, when people search here, and they put in these keywords, they could find the content that I'm that I'm showing. So I've got a keyword of healthy, I've got a keyword of family owned, etc. And I can write a lot. People are not going to see that very much. They're going to see your content more specifically. But if you do add content, or you do add a bio here, you you could get found. I can pick an accent color, a background color. And once I've made those changes, I can click Save. So we'll look at uh, we'll look at one more thing, then we'll take a break. That was uh, editing the appearance of the blog and the design of our blog. Uh, that's all found here under the theme. So like WordPress, we can have themes. Go ahead and click on Edit Theme. Uh, actually, I might not be able to show you that because I, it looks like I need to verify my email address, and that's a fake email address. So I won't be able to show you that, but if you did verify your email, and you click Edit Theme, it'll let you choose different themes, and then details of the theme, background colors and layouts and all of this stuff. So uh, I can't quite do it, but... Um, That would be under edit, under edit theme.
So this is all the dashboard. This is all behind, uh, behind the scenes of your account. Uh, if you click on, uh, you should see under username, there's your address, victorsbakery.tumblr.com. If you click there, then the address changes to what is your address. Notice it's got the, in my case, the security. If you didn't activate that SSL, it doesn't have security, that's okay, doesn't quite matter uh, for our class. Uh, but as we take a break here, just get used to that. We've got this back end, we've got this dashboard where we have all of these settings and options and such, and then we've got your actual blog, which is something.tumblr.com. There's mine, I don't have anything there, but it does have the question and the submit, my likes, following, and archive. So we'll take a break to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about, okay, creating content. What's the style of content of Tumblr? How to use it, how to add tags and attribution links, and all of that stuff. So it's 135. We'll be back at 145.